Do we ready? Emergency podcast. I think we're ready. Show. It's, it's uh, good to see you, bro. Again. Didn't, they didn't use the same. They didn't use the the, the Southern fans' favorite exception. The TV of all time <laughs> goes unused. We gotta talk talk about it. emergency podcast. <laughs> I'm Joseph Pavone. About Delso's gonna join us, so you know it's gonna be fun. This should be a really, really good episode. But uh, let's uh, let's start the TV. Either one of you guys disappointed about this? I, I'm honestly I'm not. Look, you, you can't. Bro, you're gonna introduce really me, or you're gonna introduce you off. and Nick? You're gonna introduce. I said me Jimmy Desado. <laughs> I welcome I back, Jimmy. Jimmy. It's been a minute. Did he say you're you're already cutting off? I can barely I can barely hear. Come see on, the, Josue. Hear the it's Brockton. Forty seconds in, we're in Brockton Wi-Fi Brockton segment. Brockton Wi-Fi. We had we had two months off, and Brockton we might as well Wi-Fi play the hits. has made his return all ready to start TPE Scotto. talk. All right, well let's get into TPE <laughs> talk, Jimmy. Why don't you start things off? All right. Dude, what is there You're to say? The- they didn't spend it. They didn't use it. I think people, everyone. People want to back up big. I think everybody knew that deep down, I think everybody knew that they weren't going to use this TPE, right? They're already over the tax. The The pickings were pretty slim. I imagine the teams that were, that even had players that were, would fit into it, wanted enough back in return that the Celtics said, it's just not worth it for us. Like, you know, whether it's draft picks or whatever, why, why would they want to do it, Bobby? I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not even that mad about it. I mean, I know we joke about how Wick is poor, and you know like, <laughs> we can't do that can't... anymore i know i know that's the thing. Well, if we really wanted to stick it to wick we could say oh he's cheap he didn't want to go more into the tax but they're already in it you know they're already paying they they made their moves i think everyone has to be happy with this off season so for us to sit here and criticize wick and the celtics for not doing anything with that tpe listen if they didn't sign gallo if they didn't trade for Brogdon, then yeah, exactly. we're ripping the Celtics front office. We're, we're firing Wick. We're, we're selling the team. We're doing all those things. But they made significant strides and efforts this offseason to better themselves in a way that they felt they could without mortgaging the future, you know, without without dipping too far into Wick's piggy bank. And 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 you got to you gotta tip your cap and you got to say, listen, this is pretty much the team going into the season. If you're a Celtics fan, if you're in the Celtics organization, if you're us – you have to say the Celtics are sitting in a pretty good position, um, you know, on paper. We'll see how everything looks, you know, once they get on the court. But on paper, you have to be pretty happy with what you with what you see right now. Yeah, and they've done their spending. They're, you know, facing a $45 million tax bill this year, which is unheard of in Celtics history, even back to the big three days. That Malcolm Brogdon trade thrust them significantly into the tax. And then you throw the Gallinari right. one on top of that. They said they were going to spend, and they went out and did it. Now, Brad did prelude on draft night the fact that they might not use this thing, and it seems more asset motivated than financially motivated. He did say they would go even further into the tax if there was a move to be made here. So Mm -hmm. I'm not too upset about the fact that for the options that we were looking at, whether it be Mason Plumlee or Jakob Pertl or Malik Beasley and some of these other guys that were on the list, those guys were first round picks if it was Danny Ainge demanding those on the Utah front door. Uh, players, certainly. Brad has said all along that they don't want to take away from the roster that they have here. I just hate the fact that this goes back to the Gordon Hayward conversations we had when the show first got started. It, they let him go. They didn't get any assets back. They got the $30 million, and they've done a pretty good job. What they have left to show for for that TP is a mix of Derek White and some of the other moves like Richardson that they've moved, made over the years. Like they have filled that salary slot, but they let 17 million just disappear right here. And if you're a team that's over the cap, over the tax line, like they are certainly, you can't get that money back. And this is an opportunity to do that. They do have two other TPs, a $6.9 million one that lasts till the deadline from Wancho, a $5.9 million one from Schroeder. Mm-hmm. So you can certainly still address some of the needs of this team down the line, uh, but you can't combine those. So it's a so much are you smaller upset? pool of players. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you could have gotten something, right? Like even if it was five million dollars, or I guess you could use a tiny piece of it. You didn't have to get a seventeen right. million dollar player right. like Duncan Robinson. You could have just kept some money on the books, and they certainly have three roster spots to fill right now. I'm surprised they didn't do anything with that. There definitely could have been something you could have added at that. So spot. why didn't they? But who are who are some of the who are some of the names that you would you have in mind though? I mean, that, 
that's the thing. I, I feel like you look at this for, and I don't want to say it's all set in stone, but you're in pretty good shape. So, again, again is it worth going that much? It may either get in the way of someone, you know, receiving playing time or, or, or be someone who just not tax and mm-hmm. pay 20 million or close <clears> to it. Right. I think you have two needs right now, right? A backup big. Unless we'll, we'll talk about Luke Cornett tonight. We, we can do oh, that. Sure There's a lot of praise going around for Luke Cornett in that role. Uh, but I think you need another body there. And there were quite a number of them, whether you want to talk about Plumlee or uh, Pirtle or, you know, any number of names that were available there. And then some of the wings. Now, again, we don't know who's available. We don't know who's open for business at this point. I think most teams are kind of set like their teams. I want to see what happens but you had a deadline so you had to make something happen there they didn't again i'm not stomping my feet pissed here but it was a pretty sizable chunk of money you just let go a, there sure it was I a chunk feel, of money but like a lot but, of the i just like a, a lot of the the, the the names that may have been available round pick would be enough for most of those teams right they want another guy involved i feel like brad stevens was giving us a hint, hint you know saying i don't want to send off talent that we that we have right for next year in, in exchange for somebody place then i don't want it you know maybe something we're like talking that. about let's say, we're talking let's about say end of roster. you know okay. it was from san antonio they're rebuilding they're what's his contract evidently op- they're open for sale i think it's about 10 ish million nine ten million so about half of it a little more than half and i don't know could you make that 28 pick you sent from the Derek white trade unprotected is that enough Again, it's it's always hard to talk about this without the cost known. Yeah, you know? I mean, like I, they I, could be asking for three first, and then it's like, oh, all right. Well, right, it's ridiculous. And then I feel like what the sellers are looking for is like end of end of rotation, end of bench type players. So why why drop? You know, why do ten million more? Why add ten million more on your on your cap? Why you know unprotect a pick to begin with? But I want to get one other man's opinion. Nick Jelso, everybody <laughs> in the building. He made Everyone it. does. He that. made it through whenever the internet. Someone, and whenever that. someone enters the studio and someone's mid sentence and, and uh, they say, "Look who's here! Look who's here! Look who it is! Whoa!" Nick Jelso <laughs> made it, everybody, through the internet connection issues, the dog, the dog barking issues. So you might hear a squeaky toy right now. He's playing and with it. And the flag. Yep. Look at that view behind in, you. In, I'm in not that mad at view, you. Yeah. In that Boom. view. Is that a it's picture? our city, is that, baby. Is that a picture? Or is that a is that a real? Oh movie? no, that's, that's real. Right? That's real. That's oh, our God. that's our Josue. How do you go? That's our fucking city. All right, dude. Dropping an F bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Josue, right? Yeah, that's a little, yeah, little big poppy you. right there. <laughs> big pop. Nick, it's you got to be back, fellas. Yeah, it's good to see your face, Nick. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice when's the last time you uh, got going on there? Been a while. It's been a while. I think Jimmy and I did one finals game. I, I like filled in and held the held the wall up for Xanis till he got here. Uh, I think I was sleep. All hands were on deck during the finals, and yeah, man, it's good to be back. I'm glad I was listening to you guys. It's it's funny I, stuff. I, I needed a. I needed. I know uh, you're missing. Yeah, the Celtics didn't use that TV. What's up with Brad? Come on. I listen. Like, like, like Jay that, Crowder. Like Could have gone Jay Crowder. I would have loved Jay Crowder. I mean, that's the type of toughness you need, you know, but I maybe he didn't want to. I don't know. It's tough to say again. If, Jay Crowder if the cost was insane, okay, you yeah. get why they didn't do it. Just, but one thinking first, it. <laughs> just to keep that money alive. I mean, I talked about the fact that you could have even taken a contract that someone didn't want like, say, Robinson, and just had that money on the books as a salary slot. None of us want to hear it from Wick on the tax, and certainly there's guys he would add that make just sense, that and I think this guy's a new contract, add. Bobby. Jeez Louise. I know, I know, but it's it's money. It's money. It disappeared. It's gone. It's like poof, and it's never going to be back. It's just tough to the swallow because that is but a listen, lot. But the, Brad had made definitive moves. He filled yep. holes. All we need, the Celtics need now, really, is a big, right? I mean, yeah. think about now where we are versus game six of the finals where they were celebrating on our court, right? So now you so, got Ogden, who Jimmy always we'll wanted. You got, yeah, what did you say, some of those additions. I mean, they're great additions, and I couldn't be happier. I mean, I eat crow on Brad, for sure. So, Brogdon's a big one. Bobby just Jimmy, went win. This has been your guy. <laughs> this has been your guy forever. Did, 
How does Brad, it feel the Brad final had the best Boston? Soft season, sort of speak. Like, <laughs> I think there was still a lot of Danny in there. Dan, there was a lot of Danny left last off season. I think Kemba was done before Brad started. I mean, Derek White maybe. Al, Brad's, Al. Brad's, Brad's already been. He's been Nick. This isn't. This isn't Danny. You right. gave Danny. No, now Danny it's not. From last time. Now it's not Josue. But last last off season, I mean, up until Danny went and stopped being the consultant, you you don't know. I mean, it's still Danny's team. Now it's Brad's team. And this off season, he did more than Danny has in the last probably three combined without drafting Tatum or Brown. Well, yeah. So when this move happened, go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> no, I was gonna say Brad. Brad's slowly but surely making his own mark Without on this team. question. Right? I mean, he brought Al Horford back in. He mm-hmm. signed Gallinari. He brought in Brogdon. Bro- Listen, one of the reasons why I always was high on Brogdon is because I knew how high Brad Stevens was on Brogdon. Just by covering the team over the last X amount yes. of years, every time Brad Stevens had an opportunity to compliment Malcolm Brogdon, he did. And I know that opposing coaches always co- uh, compliment um, – you know, players on the. They had team. a relationship. I, though. I get that, Brad Stevens. Yes, they did. Yeah, Br- Brad Stevens held Brogdon in a much higher regard than your typical opposing teams. You know, star player or good player. Malcolm Brogdon isn't a superstar player by any stretch. You know, he he's a player that has potential if he can stay in the court. I'm, I'm I love that they made the trade. It was you're right. It is a player that I've been I've been you know noting that I think they should go after for a couple of years now, and it just finally made sense. It was the right time where the Pacers were, right time for, you know, where the Celtics kind of were, a player that they were looking for of his caliber and what he can do for them. There was a match there. Now, that being said, I still want to see it in action. I still want to see what his role is going to be. I want to see him string together games, you know. I mean, that's been the big knock on him. I think if you talk to anybody in Philly, they're probably happy to see him go because he couldn't stay on the Indiana. court. Sorry, why did I say Philly? Indiana. They couldn't stay on the court. So, I – I want to see all that happen. That being said, I think this is a player that he can start for you if you want him to. Um, I don't think he will start to begin the year. I think he will come off the bench, and I think that's a that's a great role for him. I think he's somebody that can come in and he can you know work great with the Jays. You can put him next to Marcus Smart, and you can move Smart to the two if you want. Um, you can do a lot of different things. He's kind of like a bit of a, a bit of a chess piece, and and it, it's kind of like the perfect player for a guy like Brad to bring in because Brad likes those interchangeable pieces, right? I, I always said that, you know, Brad would start five tight ends if he was a, you know, if, if it was football, you know, because they just he just loves that positionless basketball. It's been his thing, right? So now you bring in another player who can play multiple positions. He plays two ways. He's their best free throw shooter. How many times? How many freaking times did we punch this guy walls? Can really shoot. How many mm-hmm. times did we punch walls during the playoffs after mm-hmm. missed free throw after mm-hmm. missed free throw? I mean, it probably lost them some games. Unbelievable, even- unbelievable number of missed free throws on this team. And and for that reason, I don't get hung up on starters. Malcolm Brogdon will be in the game at the end of games simply for the fact that he can hit shots, he can hit free throws, he can play two ways, and he's going to be value to, valuable to them. Simple. Simple as that. And, about- and, and uh, I think, too, also, guys, he said all the right things. I mean, when you're talking about a presser, First of all, the Celtics. So that's another thing you knew about him. You knew he's a very important. Player. He's a stand-up, mature guy, and and I think also Gallinari. Gallinari. And and as far as uh, as far as it goes with maturity, I think he sounded mature. And Brad set the tone, <laughs> or Ime, I don't remember who said it, but I loved that they came out immediately, took the pressure off of Marcus. I think that's huge. However, Marcus or Brogdon, whoever finishes the season, doesn't matter. I think in the initial part, you don't want to have that tension. And uh, who's going to start That's the scariest all... part of this. It's the only Yeah, it is. It really outside. is. And I didn't like the characterization. You know, we talk about Woj and these guys and why they say the things they do. I'm still stuck on that. This is the true playmaking guard that they needed. <laughs> that... There goes Nick. We're... Somebody, He's gonna call, be in and somebody out. call um. <laughs> Animal, animal cruelty. <laughs> just animal, because you, uh, just because you take your camera off, doesn't mean your mic's not off. Yeah, Nick, like, we can hear you I yelling mean, at your dog, dude. You know what? I Some guess he's back. Are, Come on, Nick. <laughs> Bobby, on. since noon, has wanted to kill me. 
So yeah. here you go. It's been a I'm lot back. Longer. <laughs> yeah, I'm longer. back. Listen, we're getting the doc back on this. We've, we've been on vacation. Eating, mode. We need to call animal. Control. He was eating a box. I mean, like, what the hell with the box? Like, why would you want to eat a box? That's what he was eating. Wait, Mike only, box. You guys legitimately, you guys legitimately scared of a, a clash? I don't know. I'm not scared say? of a clash, but I know how. I know how important this point guard role is to Smart. He said what he said to Max on the elevator. There were about three different interviews during the year of him saying when they gave Go me the ball and let me to. run this thing. Yes. Various different places he's saying, this, this is my role. You know, I'm the point guard. Give the point guard the ball. Let me run this thing. And to his credit, I'm looking back. I'm watching playoff games the last couple of weeks. Think of some of the golden moments he had in that role. The pass to beat the Nets in game one. Uh, that I thought he was great in round two. And it just all the different ways he helped the team down the stretch of the season when they were winning 22 or 25. They're going to keep the same starting lineup. I'm with Jimmy. In fact, Emay told me that out in Vegas that, you know, this is on the starters, the starters from last year. So I assume he means they're going to keep that five together. And why not? There was the best starting lineup in basketball last year. Uh, so it's good to hear that Brogdon's accepting the bench role as well as Gallinari. I, I think that they've probably they had are. these conversations and worked this out. But I just worry, you know how these fans are with Smart? I almost, you know how Brown was talking about the disrespect of the fans? Uh, I've never seen please. a Celtics fan. I've never seen a Celtics fan disrespect Brown. Celtics fans disrespect Smart every other week. Constantly. If he's, if he's playing every bad, game. He, if he's playing bad and Brogdon's playing great, they're gonna flip on Smart in a second, and it's but gonna. That's be up to Bobby. That's, that's up to Marcus and... to be disciplined. That's up to Marcus yeah. to be disciplined. Want to have that role, and whatever it is to win, but be disciplined not to. Uh, you think you he's know, capable? Yeah. He gave a good interview but, to the Athletics saying, "I love the move and all that." So he's saying, "Yeah, he's I mean, I think now. he looks at it as pressure off his back because cool. inevitably yeah. there, there inevitably there's going to be an eight to ten game." Somewhere in the season where he's going to miss, he's always he, any player gets an injury, and Marcus is injury prone. And to have Brogdon, Brogdon there yeah. is a plus. You're talking more about ego and personality than you are about talent or you know resiliency not to get injured. And that's the issue, right? We don't know if Marcus, in the long run, if 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 Ime is to go back to the bench, meaning put Marcus back on the bench to mix things up if things aren't going well. That's the wild card. That's where we don't know how Marcus is going to react if he has to go back to the bench. I don't think he can do it. It's I think he could. He's still just wait. Like he has done it in the past, where he's gone from starting to bench. And when was that I mean, though? That was a long time ago. Now. Long time ago. It was a long time ago. Why are we? Even, I don't. I don't understand why we have the court. That's natural for any team to switch it up if things aren't going well. But why are we like, like automatically? Oh well, they didn't. They didn't Marcus. At the, towards, yes. the, towards the finish line, then he switched things up. Wasn't as a true point guard. So yeah, why would we? Why would he die? You know, why would because he because every being, season? Because just wait, every who, season who, who, inevitably there is a point where the fan base turns on Marcus and everybody starts questioning it. It is every year without it happened in the finals. It happens every yeah, year, anything, every season. Think, someone like Brogdon would just apply pressure. It seems that way. Yeah, right. staying more focused, continuing to strive. What do you got, Jimmy? I think you're all generalizing Celtics fans by saying every Celtics fan. The loud ones. Fans. Yeah, but the in the same, in the same, on the Critical. opposite end of things, nobody praises Marcus Smart mm -hmm. more than Celtics fans do too. Like on the like overly praises him at points. So yeah, I think people get on him maybe a little too harshly at times when he does go cold from like the three point line. And he does make a couple of silly passes. Oh, and had a turnover. But on sometimes. the other end of things, like the winning plays of Marcus and all that stuff, that that could be a little overblown too. I think, generally speaking, though, Marcus Smart is a gamer. He's very mm -hmm. confident, and I think sometimes people confuse his confidence with, like, oh, like he's a he's got ego. you know this uh, ego. Yeah, there, there's a difference between exactly. you know being cocky and being confident. I think I he's a confident player. I agree and I with think you. He's a, let me finish. I think he's a team player too. <laughs> so I don't think he's going to like make this big stink about them bringing in a player just because he plays the same position. I, I mean, agree with you. He right. can't play 48 minutes. He can't but play give, 82 games. And Nick, neither can Brogdon. There's, there's plenty of I agree ball with to him. go around for those two players. They're going to both play at the same time uh, but give, in, in many cases. Now you but can, given all that, but given all that, and I agree with Jimmy wholeheartedly, 
if Emi were to decide to put to switch up the starting lineup and put Marcus back to the bench, that's a wild card. I agree with you, Jimmy, but you know he's emotional. You don't know what he's going to say. You don't know. You really don't. I mean, I agree with Josue where you're saying, why are we even having this discussion? Right. Because every season too. it happens, though. It does. It does. I mean, it, it was it never does. happening. You guys this. did it the last three seasons. The Listen, bubble. Marcus Smart, he Marcus uses Smart. it as motivation. It's the player right. of the year. You know, I think he cares I love more Marcus. about that and winning. I think so, than, too. Than, than being, being labeled as conference. I don't think he cares about that. Right. I, I agree, and I hope that that's the case. But this I, team is, you know, time and time I again, think, they get soft when the media criticizes them. This is not an unknown. We know that. Sure. I think so how have you how have you overall how have you overall liked the? Yeah, I know you talked about the pre- presser, Nick, and I I was impressed by it too. Oh, I fairly it was good comments all around. Gallinari more than anyone was very uh, forthcoming about what he needs to do and just the Nick role he's back. See, loving he's that Larry Bird talk. Red hour, back. but <laughs> this I didn't love as much. Grant Williams talking on, uh, I believe it was Duncan Robinson's podcast. About the mm-hmm. finals, about the off season, about a bunch of stuff. Oh, we caught up with Grant as well on, on Grant Vegas. Beats and, Hagen. Uh, man, Grant saying that he this this lot. one right here. I still would confidently say they weren't the better team. They weren't the Warriors. I don't. You think they were? I don't get the point in saying that. They they lost three straight games I to lose it. the series. They got care. run off the court it. on their home floor in the final game. And really, they, you know, it was one big turnaround in game one that was one of their only two wins there. So they got outplayed pretty handily in this series. And I don't know what it does to come out and say we were the better team. But everybody like on the this bubble. panel had the Celtics but me. I'm not saying I'm special. I wish I had your, the Celtics. What the hell is that? We were wrong. <laughs> no, it does. What I'm saying is you were wrong, but that doesn't make Golden State the better team. It makes them more experienced, more battle-tested. And they didn't choke. They didn't choke. Like, we all got to look at it and say, the Celtics, it's a learning experience. They have three, choke? four. The Warriors did not choke. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the Celtics did. did. The yeah. Celtics did. So, so that, were they the but that team? doesn't make the Warriors the better team. They had three players, potentially four, played for challenge. They had a lot of guys stand out. Gary Payton, Joe Sway's guy, Otto Porter. Take the Celtics leading up to the finals. You you all had Grant. I mean, everybody was top to bottom playing excellent. And they were the better team. I mean, I think the Celtics were the better team if they were clicking on all cylinders. I love Grant to death. You know, I'm at one of his biggest fans. I don't even know what you're saying. the better team. What did you say? You know what I mean? Like, like, Like that if is what makes the Warriors the better team, right? Sure. The Celtics may have been play- playing in the series, but when it was when they went face to face, the Warriors made them put them back in their place for this. As as Grant gave them credit to they out mastered them in the finals, you know? They they more disciplined. They knew oh wow, wow the Celtics think they were you know really high off of that game one win in games, right? So I don't know. I feel like that that, that Edge is what makes them the better team, but, but there's a lot more potential than the other. If that makes sense, right? I mean, like, maybe maybe I'm wrong, and I should have been saying the more talented. But I'm not, I'm not mad. He's a competitor. He wants to keep this trash. I mean, I'm not. I love not Grant like saying it's ridiculous. It. Somebody's got to have a, you know a little toughness. I love it. I love Grant saying it, and I think talent is the word you I should have said. It would be like Joe Sway saying that they don't have better audio. It's like that would be the equivalent of what Grant's saying. It's like, bro, we've done this. We've done. We've seen enough. This is seven game series, you know. Like if it's over a seven game series and they beat you the way they beat you, they're the better team. Yeah, like in football, any given Sunday, sometimes crazy things happen. You might say, oh, you know, we're a better team than them. You know, we played like shit today and blah blah blah. But over a seven game series, they kind of punked you in the end. They took three straight. If if you want to say, oh. You know, we regret the, you know, we, we, we let him off the hook or yeah, we, we feel like we, you know, left something out there that, you know, we, we could have beat them. Sure. I understand like that, but Grant, you, you gotta, you gotta lick your wounds, take the L and, and, and move forward, man. You weren't the better team. You got punked. Draymond Green punked you personally, actually, by the way. And Steph Curry had his way with the entire team. So I don't know what wording you want to use to, to, 
I, to, I, to, I to was fall wrong. asleep at night. But the bottom line is the Warriors did the, what the Warriors do. And, yeah, I had the Celtics in seven. It wasn't like I was like, oh, the Celtics are going to dominate. I knew it was going to be close, but I thought the Celtics, if they played better, would have made a series out of it. And, yeah, I could have seen the Celtics winning. I mean, they won the first game, and everyone was super high on because that. Because they were the more talented team. Just because they, they won one. I don't think you can say that. I think th- I think the Warriors had the best player on the court in Steph Curry. Well, they did, but the Celtics, top to bottom, were the better team. Who cares? I mean, what does that mean, wise. top to bottom? Top to well, bottom. I'm just like, saying that. The bench didn't even show up in the series after game one. Did but you even talent see wise, they were the they? better team. On what, paper? They don't play on yes. paper, Nick. They don't play on paper. I'm just saying, if you want to like, say talent, I mean, listen, like. but when you're looking at it, talent was not the differential. It was experience, battle tested, being able to not it choke. Was pretty damn talented, too, at points, though. I mean, let's be honest. So, whatever. Grant said what he said. Grant likes, Grant, Grant's always going to just say what he wants to say. That's part of And Grant. somebody and should. That, and, and yeah, that, that's cool. I'm cool with it. But I don't think he's right. That's all. I mean, Bobby, but give him props for having a little set of balls and saying something, on, you know. Did you guys think Bobby, you there? You frozen? Green? I think Bobby's frozen. Man, we're having we're having some issues today. Um, and it's the summer. I'm gonna you go guys, ahead and, and move Bobby a, off. A better player than Draymond Green. No, 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 no. Um, Grant Williams. I like the attitude. No. Huh? I like the attitude. I like the trash talk. I love it, Joe Sweet. That's what I'm saying. I love it. Someone's it's not really do it. trash talk, though. It's it kind of like, is. Dude, he's like, kind of clowning himself, to be honest. It's I mean, not great. really. I mean, a little bit. But... I could bring up things from the past where it's happened, and it's been, it's ballsy. I mean, I like it, especially on a team devoid of sorry guys, balls. They do. Sure. They, so um, if Grant Williams, the guy who does the Carlson, right, or whatever he does on on GIF, if he's got to be the toughest guy. Fine if he's wrong, which I could confidently say Grant they weren't the invisible. And in if Grant Williams is saying that, if Grant Williams is guy talking, Grant Williams needs to step you, up then. If he, and if he wants if he to say that better. they're the more talented team, then go be talented. Go show that you're the more talented team. Don't disappear for the entire series and get punked by Draymond Green and then go on a podcast and say, oh, we were the better team. I, you know, I'm confident in saying that. How can you be confident in saying that? You disappeared along with. Derek White, Al Horford at points, you know, pretty much everybody on the Celtics disappeared. Um, Tatum? Yeah, Tatum had one of the most disappointing series of all. I mean, Jalen Brown was was your best player almost by default because there really, really nobody else did anything for you. So if the two teams' exact same rosters matched up this postseason? I have no freaking would you clue. Take? I guess we'll find out, I guess, if it gets to that point. It's I mean, no, but that's the point. Listen. He's basically Bobby. being he's being a trash talker. Let him talk trash because no one else does. That's fine. Except Cedric Maxwell trash. once in a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I that's part of the gamesmanship. It's fun. It, it's fun, but I also think he's just wrong. I mean, that's Literally. all. I mean, if you want to talk trash, be good at it. And then I'm I can't all. Can't believe bored. we're talking about Grant Williams and a quote he had about. <laughs> well, this is the off season, man. We're going to we're going to go around here. Bobby, it. you're on. Can you see us? Yeah, I'm back. You got me. Yeah, we got one you, of those. Man. Yeah, I'm you. with you, Jimmy. It's one of those podcasts where those, I'm with you, those Jimmy. quotes okay. really stuck out to people. Stuck out to people. Yeah. What you got, Bobby? I can't. I can't fathom saying this, and then some of the other stuff he sprinkled in there, like saying to yeah. Draymond that he's the better player. I think it was pretty evident. So read which that of quote. These two players played better yeah. in the final. Yeah. Yeah. Read that quote too, if you have it. Otherwise, I'll look for it. I don't have it right in front of me, but all right. So yeah, yeah I got I, it. I got the gist it. of it is that he. I have it right here. I'll read it. Um, so on finals trash talk, you got I, it. I don't even, I, this, this is by the way, this is from Adam Taylor, NBA. So if you guys um, want to get the whole string of them um, at Adam Taylor, NBA, he um, writes for um, Celtics blog among some other. Um, Celtics blog. Other, yeah. Um, on finals track talk. Somebody told me a story about how Draymond got into an altercation when he was younger and got knocked out. I was literally doing research. That was the first time I've had Draymond not say something back to me. I was like, yeah, I got that one. He was doing research. Okay, yeah, dude. How would you do some research on, like, his death. low post skills or, or his fucking rebounding? <laughs> um, more trash talk. Draymond said, you want to be like me. And I was like, how can I want to be like you when I'm better than you already? 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First of all, that's like kind of shocked. Not by really that. trash talk. That's kind of like kindergarten Stupid. level trash talk. Like I know but you are, but Grant, what am I? Though that's a grand. That's a grand line though, for sure. But also like. You're not better than him already, and you might most likely, <laughs> no, definitely never will be, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> when you go off in a game seven, when you do, you do your best Kelly Olenek impression, yeah. you start saying stuff like this. Hey, anyways, like that's, Again, that's what Grant was doing. I appreciate Now, he said Grant. about that game, he hit seven threes, but he should have hit nine, ten. That's what he said about that Listen, game. Listen, why are we criticizing a guy? For, I mean, I, I, I know. I, I know. At the end of the season, he actually watched that Kelly Olynyk game seven thriller or game seven game, game seven uh, against the against the Wizards. He watched that uh, right before right before the game. So. Yeah. Right. 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 He definitely. Did. He did. No, he did. He said it on the podcast. Oh, he actually said that. That's Timmy, awesome. me and Timmy are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. I, like, I guess no, I got to not... listen to it fully. Bobby, give me give me something on, on this. Give me something on Grant's on Grant's trash talk, please. Give me something here. So, I remember talking to Grant after the series shortly there. I believe it was in the exit interview when I said, yeah, what, what, what do you got to do to be able to win a series like this when we're looking back on it just after it? And he said, I got to be playable. I can't be a guy that you can take off the floor into the future. Cause again, I think you said it earlier in the segment, Jimmy white grant and Pritchard. Those are the three guys you couldn't play effectively in this series right. after Pritchard, game yeah, one. I, I believe grant had nine shots made total in the entire series out of six games. So he, he was pretty terrible in this series. And again, just, you like confidence. You like some bluster. I love Grant's leadership. I mean, he was always able to sure. speak up and no qualms say his about piece that. this year. But but this, I, I don't get what this did. It's just another <laughs> tit for tat now that it's been a month. I mean, Green had the shirt filled out, you know, with all the banners. Yeah. And he had the final one filled out. <clears throat> he was <laughs> saying, shut up and this and that. Green yeah. got to have his word because they won. They dominated the series. I don't know how you can say Celtics for the better team. They didn't lose on a buzzer beater in game seven. They right. got run off the floor in game six in the garden. Love they were Grant close to, to winning. A great were, playoff they, run. But they were close they, to being up 3-1 on that, the oh Golden God. State Warriors. 2010 Celtics Please. team. That was loser mentality. That's not – Jimmy, how dare you, was, dare you say I have a loser mentality? The, you know better. Well, don't say that. I'm like, one of the tougher guys going, but, I mean – You've got to be realistic. I am, dude. No one's been more of a fucking <laughs> wow. pissed off than me. Like, what are you talking about? Area is tough like we're Nick. talking. We're talking. Trash like right rage. Dude, I mean, all, all I'm saying is, don't don't give them credit for almost being up three to one when they got Jimmy, worked out of the gym. That's the, you know, take the the comment in its entirety. They were all, we're gonna trash them because they lost in six games. They were almost up three one. We're not gonna trash them. Well, you are not we're, you, but they are. They weren't the better team. Is. We're not trashing them. We're just laughing at the comments. And if you're a Warriors player and you hear any of those comments, you must just like, you must just chuckle, right? I mean, it's all you can. Everything do. Like, Draymond says is a chuckle. Yeah, but like they, if you're the Celtics, you have to take. Now, this I will L. say this: you don't need to go on. You don't need to the go Celtic on immediate summer tour. league. When when are we going to say where was Ime in the finals? The Warriors, when are we going to say that? Because offensively, it was horrendous. All right, we're here done we go. with the finals talk. We're, just, we're talking hey, about these comments. We want to talk about Grant Williams. <laughs> I was going to say, the Celtics Summer League team, they were better than the Warriors Summer League team. They ran them off the court. But we go. finals, not so much. All right, what else, what, what else we got? We're, we've we've uh, well, exhausted the group. Nick's, Nick's going to beat us up. He's so tough. He's going to beat us up if we keep talking about Grant. Let's shout out. Let's shout out AG. What else? Oh, I, I, I just like athletic. one of our players to have a set of balls and say anything. Really. Fine. Yeah. I mean, listen. I like. Listen. It's all fun. We criticize them all for being soft all the time, Jimmy. I'd rather Grant criticize his own team than criticize the Warriors because they the Celtics deserve to be criticized. If you want to show real leadership, look within. Don't say that and you're the did. better team. He, he did. He did. Okay. Say that. Then, then, Bobby. I'm that. Crazy. then I'm good. Then I'm good with it. The other half to the comment was Grant talking about the discipline difference between the two teams. He said that the Warriors were a lot more composed, disciplined, all the different intangible things you need to win a series. I just look at that and say that's part of being a better team, especially when you've won 
what is it now three champ four championships if you're golden state <laughs> so that's part of the assessment of the two teams and again the margin was the margin was sizable here uh, the celtics did have that lead they did squander a few opportunities and even Ime, I think, would look back on it. I'm sure Ime didn't love these comments. He would look back on it and say, we just weren't good enough. So, right. They weren't. You know, the result's the result. I hate – we do this every year now. And, you know, everybody's going to have their piece on the losing side, the asterisks, the Mickey Mouse championship with the Lakers. It was a Mickey Mouse That's, championship. If you that win was the championship – No, it wasn't. If you, yes, it if was. you win the championship, you're the champ. Mickey Mouse champion. Deservedly so. You're Mickey Mouse. <laughs> You're goofy. This is Grant Tash Talk I, right here. Yeah, this is tra- this is what Grant did to us. OG Trash Talk. All right, just what, what's he, up next? You just better back this up, Bobby. All right. This is coming from yeah. Bobby Eastern Thank Conference yeah, Finals, Bobby. We got to the Conference Finals. Like, listen, I think the future is really good. Now, for that is team. a legitimate accomplishment. I'm just saying – you weren't the better team. I'm just saying, I'm just taking yeah. the comment that face I think that's there. a fair. We do, I think that's we do fair have a sponsor, point. though. Let's go. We got a sponsor, Joe Sway, right? We got a new sponsor. We're friends now for a week. New yeah, sponsor alert. Say, everybody everybody up, Jimmy, listen up. You can up. help me out. Everybody listen up. I was trying to say earlier, you guys sponsor. keep talking to mugs. Let me talk, talk about AG. Athletic Greens. Uh, you. But guys, you haven't used it seriously. Like, what I, I love the most about Athletic Greens, is that, as I've been using it the last couple weeks, is I, I, wanted, I wanted to improve my energy on the daily and not have to take a bunch of vitamins that I would forget to take. And that's exactly why uh, the ideal option for me, at least right now, right? I mean, it's Next drinking it right now. I am legit. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat, uh, you know, whatever kind of Feisty. diet you're on, it contains less than one. Now, uh, if you head over to athleticgreens.com slash garden, you get a one year supply of immune support. Also, you get five free travel packs. With your first purchase so you have all you have to do is is go to athletic again that's athleticgreens.com slash garden hey guys check it out again it's it's just a goodly health uh again uh energy boost i'm already feeling the difference man it's only been like about a week yeah a couple of weeks doing it right now so yeah guys check that in out athleticgreens.com yeah. slash garden in case you guys didn't hear what the deal was because i may have got cut off it's a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin free D. Free one-year supply, five free, five free, free travel, travel packs. packs with your first purchase. Honestly, I got we, you know, I got one shipped to me. I got a whole box shipped to me. Comes in an awesome package. Um, the travel, the travel pouches are great. Stick them in your in your gym bag. You know, if you work it out in the morning, if they say you know, just drink it first thing in the morning, right before breakfast. It's gonna give you like. Honestly, we'd be here for 20 minutes talking about all the vitamins and nutrients that it, that it includes. It's it's honestly time to take back your health. If COVID got you going in the wrong direction, it's time to reverse that shit. Give Athletic Greens a try. Athleticgreens.com slash garden. One year supply of vitamin D, five free travel packs. Um, I know that at least the package I got came with a cool shaker. It came with a big pouch of the powder. Um, mix it in with a little water if that's the way you want to do it. Um, you could probably do it with milk too. Um and just it's a good way to you start need. your day just some water that's it. That's yeah it. we're it's sending out yeah we're sending out really cool more uh celtic cedric maxwell t-shirts john is so dm your receipt for oh yeah okay. com slash garden to at john underscore zanis yes and, and a and month honestly, we're sending them out honestly guys we're all about that we're all about the health here so whether it's athletic greens or whether it's another sponsor if you guys can see the trend here we are, you know, trying to better ourselves, trying to better our our friends and fans who are, or Celtics fans, I should say, who are, who are, you know, watching these shows. And um, this is a great, great product, and it's a popular product. If you, you just Google it yourself, do your own research. People you love believe. it. Yeah, honestly, yeah, do your very own research. popular. Everyone heard we're sponsor. Uh, they're going to be sponsors of ours, and they're like, oh, how can I get some? My mom's been using it. My uncle's been using it. It's it's really popular. It tastes pretty good too. You know, you look at yeah. it and you're like, mm, I don't know about this, these nutrients, but tastes great. <laughs> Easy. Throw it in the water, start the day, and you're done. That's like step one toward a better, better. That's year. it. That's it. Start off on the right note. How to you do know, it. a little, it's a little, little, get so. the mind right too at the same time and, and go from there. All right. So that's, that's Athletic yeah. Greens. You guys will be hearing about them. Um, athleticgreens.com slash garden. Um, guys, you guys, I think, uh, 
you mentioned Danny Ainge and what he's doing in Utah. Is is Donald Mitchell the last piece of this thing? Is he going to hold on to him? If he's not going to hold on to him, what are some of the options do you think he has that Utah has right now in terms of trading uh, Donald Man. Mitchell? Bobby, let's start, let's start with you. This well, is we all, Bobby's. We all yeah. agree. We all agree no Celtics, right? Oh, I, I would love to have him. Here. I would love to have him. You would? All right, so who are you giving up? I don't want to get into Brown. it. People are going to call me a hater. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to get into it. People are going to call me a hater. You're going to be I where just, I was a week ago. I just love Donovan Mitchell. It's not even about not liking – it's not even about, like, wanting to trade somebody in the Celtics for him. It's just I love Donovan Mitchell. I think he's a gamer. I think he's a little bit underrated or, like, unheralded a little bit because he's in Utah. Uh, I think if he ends up on the Knicks, like, that's the rumor – like, this dude's going to be the greatest thing to happen to the Knicks since, like, freaking Allen Houston was draining threes. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I, I just love Donovan Mitchell. So I don't think it's going to happen. I think, like I said, the Celtics are the Celtics. They're going into the season. They're happy with who they have. We might get into some talk about some of the Celtics players a little bit later. I don't want any any spoilers. Um, but, yeah, obviously, if you if you were a player for Donovan Mitchell, the conversation would would have to start. At Jalen Brown, obviously, um, it's not a slight at Jalen Brown. And we're talking about a Donovan Mitchell All Star, perennial All Star for for many years to come. So um, it's just a matter of you know what what you'd be willing to get for him. I just think he's an unbelievable player. Now, Danny yeah. Ainge it has a has a tall task at hand. I mean, he's already he already got a boatload for Rudy Gobert. Now they're asked. I guess they're asking him to get rid of Mitchell too. So they're in a full rebuild over there. Um, clearly, thing. yeah, it's Danny's thing, I, I guess. I mean, What's and up? if the Celtics were interested, of course, there's you know a relationship there, a, a very good relationship there to have talks. Now, the fact that nothing has even come up about that tells me that the Celtics aren't interested, so that's probably it. There'll be no, there'll be no Mikhail Garnett trade with Danny. <laughs> no, especially after walking no. out, or he's gonna. He's gonna, as, as someone said recently, take, try to take the Celtics to the cleaner here, and he just first in that deal for the Rudy Gobert trade. So the price is high here. If you're Boston, I think you're talking all your picks, which at this point is I want to say five because you gave up this year's and twenty eights. So you don't have a ton. The Knicks quietly have eleven future firsts after their draft navigation here. So that feels inevitable. It's just you know where's the line gonna be drawn and. Who, how right. can they get this done? The Jazz are going full-scale rebuild here with this move. They don't even want R.J. Barrett back from the sound of it from New York. So even have to give up a Brown, it's hard to stack the salary. Otherwise, you just signed a bunch of guys, traded for a bunch of guys. So it, you don't exactly have the flexibility to do this right now. I just wonder how long this is going to linger. I do love uh, Donovan's game. Some of these playoff performances he's had over the years have been esque. But I do wonder what he's going to look like outside of that system. Rudy gets so much crap. He was the bedrock of everything they were doing there, defensively especially. He took a lot of heat off Donovan, who at times has been a suspect defender. Um, I saw him back at Louisville. Great defender in college. Didn't really translate to the NBA, and it feels like he's only gotten worse as time's gone on here. So it feels like he's going to go to the Knicks. I don't know. Does that make you scared of the Knicks? Jalen Brunson? No, never. Mitchell? Barrett? It would be fun to have them entertaining again, at least. But I don't think you're scared of them either. So, I don't know. Go ahead and do it. I had a lot of fun at MSG this year with that environment. And I'll definitely get the New Yorkers fired up, bringing him in. And like you said, Jimmy, this, this would be the most fun. What What is that environment like as compared to the garden here? Oh, it's insane. I, 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 I couldn't even how, I've never been to MSG. Just the screeches after every basket. That was the game, of course, where they had the game winner. So I think that played into it. They just kept marching back from down 20. And you get the bing bong flying. And, you know, everybody's just pumped up. They're screaming at the refs. It's packed and front to back. You got to give New York, the fans, their credit. Because they have had some dreadful teams in recent years. But they still show out. That place still gets loud. It's really unlike any environment I've been to. Even... Golden State in the finals it wasn't got, quite like got, that. Milwaukee yeah. was a strong one. Milwaukee was a really strong yeah. one. But New York this year, best I've seen by far. Boston, too, of course. Joe Perhaps. Sway, what do you got on, on, on Mitchell? Yeah, I mean, if you're in New York, I, I think you 
you do everything you can to make. I think this is one of those those uh, make up moves for the the ideal star point guard that have pan out in that city. It just hasn't worked out for one reason or another. So yeah, if I'm New York. I'm doing this absolutely. This past season was a humongous setback, right? I mean, a year two years ago, it seemed like the Knicks were going to be playoffs regularly, or at least on back-to-back seasons, and they didn't even make the playoffs this year. So I, I, I just think um, you do the best, best you can to make this happen and, and and keep this team or keep their hopes alive. Yeah, I, I mean, the Knicks, so they're always taking shortcuts, right? They're always trying to mm-hmm. do something like this. That and guys, man. Yeah. Our pe- people must be pissed around the league the way they've high, uh, or, you know, forecasted these, these deals, showing up to the Jazz Mavericks game, sitting courtside, the whole collective there, World Wide West, and uh, the whole agency that they have run the team now. <sighs> There's going to be some angry people in the league if this gets done on top of the stealing Brunson from Dallas, which was pretty well highlighted deep in last year that they were going to try to make that move. I don't know if there was tampering, but if they were – they were well connected, and again, it looks like this move's kind of in the bag the right amount of assets. So guys, I'll say this: you guys, hear about the uh, the force surrounding Kemba Walker and the uh... Kemba too. And the who? right now, it looks like they're gonna wave him. The Los. Oh, is he saying Lakers? Oh, we got the Lakers. We got Brock and Wi-Fi hitting again. I can't hear you, Joe. Joe Sway. You guys can't hear me. Say up. Back up, come back. The Lakers. You're getting cut up. You, no, you're oh, getting cut up. Like, that would be Lakers something, right? Lakers. Next, the old. Can we talk Lakers, man? Because I get such a kick Hold out on. of this. Like, before we get to the Lakers, go ahead, Jimmy. I'm all for it, Bobby. Let's, when you are, let's button up the Mitchell, the Mitchell combo. I just want to say, if you're the Knicks, I think you got to do what you can to, to get this player. Again, superstar player, perennial All Star, will make New York City buzz. You know, every time he's out there. There's no place better than, you know, Celtics fans don't want to hear it, but MSG is the place to play. Any player will tell you that. Any player will tell you that, basketball or hockey, there's nothing like playing under the lights at Madison Square Garden. When the Knicks are good, when New York teams are good, it's good for the sport. Knicks, Yankees, Rangers. I mean, I don't – Yankees are good this year, too. I'm not going to say the Jets because that's a lost cause. The Jets will never be good. And, and, you know, if they were, (laughs) yeah, that would be fun. Um, The 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 Giants are right down there. The Jets stink. They always will be. The Giants, they sometimes have a glimmer of hope, but they stink too. But yeah, if the Knicks can turn it around and be a, and be a fun team and be a, and be a tough team, that's great for the Eastern Conference. That's great for the Celtics. You know, maybe get a little a little Celtics Knicks rivalry brewing. You know, like well, that's the thing. The East is tough. You were just about to get DeAndre the East, East here is too. Tough. Is this close? But that was close. I don't know. We'll see if can it we gets the done. Chat? We'll see if Sorry. it gets done. The East just keeps getting better and better, though. That's really the only takeaway you have from this deal. I don't think anyone's really itching to get in on Mitchell either. I actually think quietly Brown. I'd rather have Brown than Mitchell. I, I would. would too. Yeah. And I'd rather Quinn have James guard, Worthy than Brown. Time. The chat room is exploding right. trying to compare Worthy and Brown. There's just no comparison. They're not the same player. I'm seeing well, a lot of the, say, uh, the uh, smart bad. talk. A lot of that? smart dissing. Yep. I guess they don't like Bobby. Oh, Bobby these Smart. fans, they Maybe love Brock. They don't today, Joe Sway. Today yeah. they don't. Crazy. I mean, Brogdon. Look what you started listen, with. This, I this like Brogdon, Brogdon a lot. This Brogdon Smart Beef. I'm not here for it. I don't want this mouth. Enough. Let's Smart's get some comments on the screen. Brogdon. Um, Again, Jonathan, if it was yeah, Smart uh, for Brogdon, this, this isn't true. I, I was born way better. Was good, but I wasn't old, that old. 90s Knicks were fun. Uh, I'm not getting into worthy versus versus Jalen. Why not? Anyway. See off season. Because Nick, you're you're the one like <laughs> egging that, that conversation like, let's in do the it. chat. That's the only reason why. Isn't it's this the time you're, you do oh, it. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> I was Nick's gonna say, to where'd that come from? I'm have to comment. I commented three times well, because yeah. James Worthy and Jalen Brown are non comparable. They're not the same player at all. Okay. Yeah. Nick compelling I mean, reasons I'm way better. Um, <laughs> number one, because he was a finals MVP. Number two, because the Lakers don't win two championships at the end of the decade, if not for worthy. Don't take me here. Let's take it offline. DM me at CLNS underscore Nick. Yes, I don't want to flip Jimmy out, even though it's the offseason. 
It is the off season, but we don't want to. That doesn't mean we want to put people to sleep. That everybody in the chat room is talking about, bro. Really? Bob Drexler. Now, now it's Drexler. Clyde Drexler. Do you really want to compare Jalen Brown with Clyde Drexler? Clyde Drexler no. is an unbelievable player. Michael right, Jordan, 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 Jordan popped. Okay. Choked Jordan and choked and choked and choked and choked. Yeah, he never won anything. Michael Jordan choked. issue. Yeah. Michael Jordan issues and Magic Johnson issues. And and Magic Johnson, sure. All right, what else? All right, sorry, I'm hijacked. Now right. they're going James Worthy and, and Jeff Green. I, I can't. I got to turn it You're off. egging you on, dude. Just stop looking at the chat. Well, I guess the did. last thing on the list here for me is uh, uh, the recent picture that was surfing on, on Instagram last okay, week. Kyrie. Irving and Kanye West together. Uh, Max and, and I, we spent a whole lot Kyrie of time. What is Kyrie doing? Look, we we know the the, the sports agency. Sports, we know the umbrella. We, we get it. But how, how do you guys feel just about that? The see those three together. I know some of this fans are gonna see what side of the fence you guys are on. <sighs> okay, who wants to go first? No, I don't. Yeah. Jimmy, go ahead. The only thing I got on it is this is something to watch. The The whole announcement when it came out, the agent moved to Kanye and that representation. Jalen didn't touch on it a ton, that he's excited to work with a guy he looks up to. And again, I think a lot of these young guys look up to Kanye. We've been over that. Like a very inspiring figure for a lot of people, you know, our age coming up and his journey and all that. And yeah, and a pretty good marketer, pretty good guy to get your name out there and all that kind of stuff. I think it makes sense off the court in a variety of different ways. Now, as far as this notion, and he liked the tweet you said in the statement, or Kanye said in the statement, I believe that Jalen Brown's one of the most underrated players mm-hmm. in basketball. Did you say something I, I about like, with... not respected too or something, or did you not say that? Did I make that Celtics up? Fans, no, he Celtics didn't. fans uh, okay. always disrespect. There was a tweet that he liked that was something that yeah he liked the Celtics tweet. Fans. That's how this whole thing started. Like no one gotcha. said that like the tweets saying that I'm tired of Celtics fans disrespecting Jalen or whatever. Yeah. But, but but yeah, Kanye but, had a so. quote. Kanye had a quote in like the announcement of signing Jalen Brown. Again, I'm not even entirely sure what he said. Like I don't know if this information was out there and I just missed it. But like. He was Jalen Brown signs with Donda Sports. Does that mean that like he signed with him for you know like his sports agent is with Donda Sports, or is there some sort of signing there where like now he's you know maybe representing Donda Sports in some capacity? Maybe it's through, maybe it's. I a believe stuff. it's like off the court ventures and yeah, right kind of market. Okay, okay. So Bobby, I kind of am. I'm not kind of. I think where you were going with it is that. It's something to to have your antennas up about, right? Yep. And I completely agree. And we've talked about it since the winter. Yeah. Wasn't there a bullpet yeah. report that regardless of what the Celtics do, regardless of how they finish, he no, can he look at free that. agency. And he will. He will. I thought the report was if things start I think to go he's south, to. blah, blah, blah. But here, here's here's the thing. Yeah. I, I think that Jalen Brown is is much more about, like, he's much more than just basketball. Right. So if he can, if he can do something, you know what, if he can do something that's going to benefit him or his family or whatever outside of basketball, like for his, you know, post basketball career, because we know he's into fashion, right. He has his clothing line um, and all that stuff. And we know he's, he's into a lot of other things. He's in the union. Yep. And that's great. And he might think, Oh, it might, might be better business decision for me to, Go elsewhere for this reason, that reason, reason, and the other reason. Kanye West doesn't give a shit about Boston, right? Kyrie Irving doesn't give a shit about Boston, and those like their loyalty isn't anywhere near Boston. So if 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 Jalen Brown is surrounding himself with people who don't have that loyalty to Boston, there's a reason to, like I said, just have your antennas up and know that Jalen Brown's going to do what's best for Jalen Brown, and that's fine, good for him. You know, a lot of players are going that way now, it, like the loyalty to a team. Like it was, you know, if Nick was still here, he would tell tell us all about loyalty in the 70s and the 80s and, and 90s and how teams stick with one player. It just doesn't happen anymore. And in the, on the other side of things, teams will be quick to trade a player if it benefits them. We've seen Danny Ainge do it with the Celtics, right? I mean, Isaiah Thomas yeah. is still hard. To Boston's credit, though, they've been – 
they've been very protective of Brown over the years. I don't think they've floated him at all. Like his name's been out there in conversations, but I never really felt like the Celtics were actually exploring moving him. They protect, Thank you. protected Tatum and Brown. Very Wait, well, were you think, by- more than most teams. Your tongue this whole time? I was uh, I was just backstage. I put myself backstage because nothing I'm gonna say is gonna be good. Oh, oh okay. Well, no, I'm not gonna say anything <laughs> bad. I, I, I just think it's a bad look. And and I heard Jimmy say team loyalty the Celtics You're are so loyal it's to a bad look guy. in what way hanging out with Kyrie yeah it's a bad look dude I mean come on it, I know well, for a both, fact they had issues they're, when they're, he was here. they're both represented by the same guy who cares when did yeah. agents start running the league and Jimmy as far as you're concerned with player movement that's uh, that's starting to change now in regards to players wanting to know it's fashionable to be Golden State homegrown. All of a sudden, it flipped, and it's slowly changing, and it will again. It will. I mean, the, once LeBron retires and KD's gone and Kyrie, it will change. It will change. And, and, and Steph shows it, and he's had a lot of success for loyalty to Golden State, which is a great organization with a great culture. I mean, I, I'm with you, Jimmy. I think it's yeah, something to keep I, an eye I on. Think- Look, I, I just think it's, it's something to keep in mind. Obviously, it's interesting, but the other part of it is how, like, that's what I care about the most. And I think, think how he bounces back is obviously going to make an immediate impact on the that. And whether that means that him getting more touches, you know, down the end of the at, you know end of the stretch, if he can be someone mm-hmm. that this team can, you know, be confident in, I would love that to be. Tatum and Brown. There's a clear hierarchy here, and I think it's Tatum above Brown. I, I'm not saying I don't mean that in the sense of Brown. Brown is going to do what he wants to do, and he and he has every right to do that as long as he performs well in the basketball court. Player, which I do think he will, especially with playing alongside someone like Malcolm Brogdon. I think that's a huge addition for him, for what he's going to do on the court, but what he's going to be in the locker room, uh, the kind of leader he's going to be, and, and the fact that these. Two to share um, opinions on, on, on you know, uh, on politics or you know, things that are beyond basketball, right? I shouldn't maybe should say politics, but uh, um, you know, it's not. It's, so that, that's good. You know, I, I don't. It's weird. I'm sure for Celtics fans to see him hanging out with Kyrie, but I really said anything. Out of, it's kind of weird you know, all together. Give, giving him props. He he he, he called him. A, a few months ago before they played against each other in the in the playoffs. So it shouldn't be a surprise. But and I don't think people should look at that out the door here. No, he's going to – look, he's going to be him. He's going to – He's not out the door, but – brand. He's going to continue. He's going to continue to build his brand. He's going to continue to build who so he is as a player these fans. and market himself. I'm I'm okay with that as long as – you know? Of course you can hang out I with hope everybody, we get to whoever hear he from wants him to. Everybody always hung out with whoever yeah, they wanted to. It's not the point. It's the photo ops. Why are they putting shit on Instagram? Like, it's 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 inflaming it's the, the fans. Brand, and this is this is it's the brand he's trying to build. And I wonder Nick, just how important that is to him. I wonder how important that is to him. And is he going to be able to build the kind of brand, the kind of legacy he wants? Not here if he doesn't Boston. smile. That might be as big on the court, as big of it, as big as is on the court prerogatives and he's been a great player on the court he's a phenomenal leader on this team I think he took leaps and strides in that area this year but we haven't even had the opportunity to really ask him the question like do you want to be here in Boston long term like is that your priority and it's a far way off but it's not this season goes by and it's one year left after this year so, but Bobby, to, to Joe Sway's it's point, something you have right to pay attention now, to. They win a championship, everything changes. Guys leave their teams all the time now. Guys who won championships leave their teams. It's about their lives and their their brand and what they want to accomplish on and off the court and where they feel at like their best position. He's hanging with a guy who's I just sense the theme that's growing that I, – I just sense this theme that's building with Jalen, that he feels underrated – undervalued, right. whichever one of those words you want to use. And, and now, so you got to address that somehow. And to and, be fair, I think Ime's done a good job on court, the court of emphasizing him. Joe Sway's been saying this for two years. Same saying what? That, well, just that Jalen is, you know, we, it's weird a little bit. His Instagram stuff, Joe Sway, you said a couple times 
about Jalen and it, it, are these two guys going to be here long term? Could they play together? And I think that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is Jalen and Jason. If they're winning championships, I think they'll stay together. If they're not, it was probably always Jalen that was going to go. He's more. Is that Jalen's priority? I think winning championships, I think if when you win, it becomes your priority to defend. And if not, then be quiet. You could go. You know no, what I mean? I, I think these guys want to win. I, I do think they want to win. I think they um, do. I it's up there. Do. Yeah, it's definitely up there. But there's a lot of things that are up there, I think. But sure, but but they, I don't think Jalen has a wandering eye right now thinking, well, he's not there for me. How could he? He was two wins away from the NBA right. finals. If anything, he's looking in the mirror saying, man, what, what, whatever. And, and look, if people who want to say, oh, well, he played better than Tatum in the NBA Finals, well, all right, that's a fact. That was tried to go into the next season and, and respond. That, that's what I'm waiting for. And and there is still and some will, privacy in, in celebrity. There, excuse I'm sorry. Yeah, there is still should. some privacy in celebrity. That was a photo op. And it was it was really uncalled for. I don't, I do don't, that really, take, I, I don't yeah, have an you issue don't think, with, I don't have an issue with, them going on a photo op and they're in the same and, agency yeah that's right. what that like, was all like, about that's just that's just the year 2022 yeah. so that's, i don't have an exactly issue with it i don't have an issue with with him doing the photo op or any of that stuff like go oh, hang out do whatever you want i'm only saying if you're a celtics you... fan and you see jalen you know ha- surrounding himself with guys like Kyrie and kanye players who players and people who have no loyalty to boston whatsoever they're in his ear about hey yeah or anyone. you can win in boston but you could also win in LA, or you can also win in in. Jalen believes he can win wherever he goes. Exactly. And he can continue and to hey, grow and become one of the better players in the league. And hey, Jalen, by the way, yeah, you can win in LA, and guess what? We can also set you up with this unbelievable clothing. You know, you know this this storefront property. You know, oh, and I have all these connections to you know these fashion designers, and oh, and, and by the way, exactly. So my my point is. I would only be concerned about it because if if Jalen Brown, I'm not saying he doesn't want to win. I I know that he does, but if he's also thinking ahead to other ventures, like a lot of these athletes have outside of basketball, right? Preparing for their future, then he might think outside of his next just his next contract with Boston. He might say, "Well, let me weigh the pros and cons of of everything, not just the team that we've assembled around me." That's all. Well, I'm not well, saying what's helpful? Moving, saying. It's something to be taking out. And I guarantee you, if John was on the show, he would be concerned. I mean, we can all agree with that. That's like, true. it doesn't take much. But he would definitely say, Our intent, this is all we're saying. Just put your antennas nah, he would, a little bit. What do you say, he would, go, he would go, it's a little weird. weird. A little weird. Yeah. <laughs> he would say, start <laughs> to prepare. Well, here's, here's two I just, pluses. If I'm going to look at two positive signs, is that Brown has invested – heavily in the Boston area, whether his education program here is, you know, work with the colleges and he's, you know, he had the store here as well. So he has tried to make the inroads in the city pretty successfully. You know, I think the fans have supported his ventures as well. So there is a relationship between Brown and Boston that works along with the sure. fact that Brogdon is another player who's pretty active off the court, and those two have a relationship going back through the union, through their time in Atlanta. So, you know, they're setting up, I think, to support him well and do the different things he wants to try to accomplish here, too. But again, let, let's talk about, you know, what does he want? What does he want to accomplish here? You know, what are ways fans can help? What are ways the team can help support what he wants to accomplish Listen. off the court? Because, again, those things are important to him. Might be as important as his on court play. He's talking about respect online, right? That was a topic two weeks ago. He's right hanging now. out with Kanye, Bobby. I mean, at some point, the messages are going to get a little crossed. Oh, yeah. Kyrie as well. Right. He's talking about respect. Oh, we got, uh, yeah. Two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. And the next time he makes an appearance, he does a photo op with the guy who crippled your team for two years. Stepped on your logo and called you basically a win. I don't think those guys don't like Kyrie, though, Nick. We've realized that. Yeah, but I don't think that matters. I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say is, you're talking about respect on Twitter because talking heads or whoever fans are doing what they do. Then fans are not supposed to be inflamed by the fact that he's appearing in a photo op 
with a guy who intentionally tried to bury your franchise? <laughs> oh, he didn't, Jimmy. No, I mean, I mean, I don't think Kyrie intentionally. Well, tried. Member, oh, he wasn't burning that's sage. That's I mean, come on, he stepped on the logo. Well, take burning him. sage. Are you talking about Tatum's friends with Kyrie too? I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what timeline you're on. <laughs> he did. But. That's true. Tatum's that's probably that's... even closer with Kyrie. I don't think that matters. Fans... He's trying to say that it's a bad look. It's a bad look if you're if you're. If you're a guy like Jalen Brown and you and you want to be a Boston Celtic, he, he Nick can't understand why he would then pose for pictures with somebody who was so anti-Celtics. Is that okay? Fair? Yeah, right. Let, let let me let me just describe it, Jimmy. Me and you, right? We're friends, but I guess the audience doesn't like you. But let me not try. Now to I don't apologies. understand. I, I mean, I could. I know that, but listen. Everybody's going, it's not 1972, Nick. <laughs> when did respect become 1972? The man put on his Twitter handle, respect. He respects Kyrie. Where, why is there no accountability for the players? I, I just don't. So he could, he respects Kyrie so he could disrespect the fans. No one's telling him he can't be besties with Kyrie. Go hang with them. Do whatever you want. But why do a photo op and don't tell me about the agency? I don't think that why is the, up the, the same agency. Uh, That's why it like, was a photo. He can yeah, post the pictures. I mean, I don't really care about that. All Nick, I'm you saying wouldn't is, want to uh, post us all together to, 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 you know, represent the company. Like, like man. I, mean, I, I think right. what I'm trying to do is put it down to a human level and take it off a of basketball. If we're friends and somebody else and I sit, scream respect and then hanging out with you or somebody else publicly disrespects the person. I'm saying I deserve respect to. To me, that's disrespectful. I mean, for him to go and hang out with the guy who punked you, right? And your city, on not just hang out with them. Go hang out with them. Go to house parties. Go chill. Do whatever you got to do. But a photo op inflames your fans, who you're going on Twitter saying you deserve more respect from. It just doesn't make from. sense. I understand where you're coming, but I still think he has a yeah. right to do it. My only, my only thing is but fans incident. have a right, and we have a right to do our job, Jimmy. Which is be do the Celtics fans oh, no, care no, no, no. about you? Have, you have, you have your opinion. opinion. I'm not I saying it's just it, a given. I'm just not surprised to see it. All I'm saying is have your antennas up. That's all, because not because he that's took what, the picture. Yeah, that's what matters Did, here to fans. Exactly. That that's what matters. It's 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 to me. It's not. It's not. Oh my God, that that's a that's a stab in the heart. Like, oh, I can't believe you would take a picture with Kyrie. It's that. Okay, I have. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna note that and and understand that. You know, Jalen Brown's got. You know, other things, Me? other ideas. You know, other ventures in his mind. He's. He's. You know, that was a. That was a picture to say. Hey, like meeting of the minds. You know. You know, looking at looking at. You know, They're thinking about together. bigger and better things. Exactly. That's all. And like whatever. But. If that's truly what it was, I mean, let's be honest. They're not talking about the Boston Celtics, right? How do you know? No, they're definitely talking maybe about them leaving the Boston well, that's Celtics. Sure, but last not time, Joe, about, last no, time I'm with you, Kyrie was caught on camera. I think Jimmy's well, on. Kyrie's got some stuff to figure I, I out himself. Hey, this is a this is, is Jalen's personality in a bit, in, in a sense, right? Right? It's like, look, I'm I'm riding my own wave over here, as in, oh, right. you should incorporate your teammates, or whatever. That's fine. You know, you're a leader. He's just a leader. It's just as much of and look. If this is the way he wants to lead, then that's fine. Again, my my thing is always about what is he going to do on the basketball court. But because if he doesn't, if you don't see that kind of improvement. You don't see that kind of stride. The narrative is they don't change. tweet about respect you know, and nonsense you know? like that. Nick, Keep it all talk about pictures. We saw pictures of Jason Tatum and Grant Williams posing with Warriors players, like. Two weeks after they got smoked by them, why don't you talk about those? No, pictures? but that was that was different. Draymond, the Warriors players yeah, didn't do. Kyrie Irving crippled this team for two years, two Dude. seasons. Point Everybody is, else wants to have. Point is, but we know they have a relationship with him. I don't care. We may know, but why put on your Twitter handle you want respect and then disrespect the people that you want respect from? I don't know why. Why talk? Well, for Celtics about... fans, we've talked. We, we've talked about this th during that Brooklyn series, and again, all the more relevant with Kyrie's career in flux here. 
he's not a threat to you anymore. You just swept his team. Uh, what, is, what is Brown going to go team up with him? Kyrie's career could be over by the time Brown hits free agency, for all we know at this point. So I'm going to move past that now. Again, when Kyrie said it last year, it was, it was roll your eyes because they had beat the Celtics. Now the Celtics just swept them. The Nets look like they're about to collapse as a franchise. People yeah. are in the chat room Durant saying he didn't locations. disrespect us. I don't get yeah, it. I don't think he did. Yeah, dude. Brown? Dude, he he right, destroyed well. your coach. All right, I'm done. I'm not going to have a Yeah, but about. you just you just swept them. Yeah. You, you, the players are never going to make it personal there. That You just kind of have to accept that. They sent a message that's on the, the that's I'm not trying that's to the change the players. On All that. I'm doing sure. is don't inflame the fans. Keep it chill. Go to your house and chill. No need for but photo that's ops. stupid. That's stupid. That's your own opinion. But, like, people can go They're take pictures both wherever the hell they want, dude, and you shouldn't get upset. So, yes, it. it was about Kanye, right? It wasn't about yeah. Why are they hanging out with Kanye? Buddy. It was about both of them. Because he's signed he's him. <laughs> are you good? I think it's bedtime. Are you good? Are you good? Them. <laughs> I don't know why he signed with them, right? independent of Ooh, each other. Yo, Talk to my assistant. I'm not talking to you, but I'll sign with you. Bro. We're not chilling. I would have You're going next. Nick's, Nick's going. Nick's going full boomer. The last like 20 minutes here. Because so, everybody in the chat bad. room is saying it's okay. Shit on us. I don't know. I, I don't. I, I didn't get that. I just didn't get that. Like the, like I said, <laughs> the only thing I took out of that was hey. And ten is up a little bit. I'm not like, oh my god. I'm Where's so, Kyrie going? When is he, he going to be on the shit. Nets next year? Kyrie? Kyrie? Yeah, I think he will. Who the hell? No, it's impossible to know what. Nobody what wants him. Thinking. The Lakers. What about Durant? What about Durant? That's the real question. What about Durant? I don't know if the Lakers can. How really? Do, I think they're at a. At a no, is right? he staying put? Is what I wanted. To, is what I'm asking. Thank you, Larry. I will. Who? Durant and Kyrie. Yeah. Are they just gonna play it back as it's, as just angry couple? <laughs> for the kids, it's tough to tell. I'm not a lot of- it's tough to stay together for the know. kids one more year before they go. So, like, before they go to it's college, two wait, wait, the angriest, most the, uh, miserable, no unlikable people in NBA history, right there. Those two, dude, that is just yeah, a ugly I don't know marriage. why Durant's on a loveless the situation. Marriage. That handshake, that was great. That was cute. So the word, the word seems to be that. Durant doesn't like that the Nets put their foot down on Kyrie and there's a possibility that they could play together, but he wants out. I don't get that. Like, there's got to be some layer of frustration with Kyrie on Durant's part, right? Of course. At this point? Durant's just... Because they got to play the, together. Maybe this thing is beyond Kyrie. You know, I think he sees the big picture, could be. picture and saying, like, see a way we can compete with these top teams in the Eastern Conference, you know? They know, I've said you know, Chris that. Middleton's Again, coming back. Situation. Like just about yeah. Miami Heat. You know, there's a lot of teams ahead of them now, and I think, I think they know that. I think Durant knows that. Even they, if they try to run it back, I don't think it's going to go well. <laughs> Those yeah. same teams that he's afraid of. You know, the mm-hmm. tough part is you can't get a lot for Kyrie. The market for Durant has been minimal, which is amazing <laughs> to think about. So they might have no choice. All three of them: the Nets, the Durant, Irving. Great. They might just have to all try to improve their standing. What about, and can Washington, I don't know, with Steve Nash's coach. and Thank you. Can Washington jump in here and, and, and make a deal for uh, Durant what you, with Bradley Beal? Bring him back home. He's from D.C. He's a D.C. native. Again, if that report was true mm-hmm. that we saw floating out there, they were asking for Cat, Edwards, Picks, and more from Minnesota. And, and – I don't think anyone can rival that. The Durant deal, given his years on his contract and given where he's at in his career, some of these huge packages we've seen, it would have to be steps and steps above that. And that's where, like, we, we kicked around the Celtics thing. It was never Brown for Durant. It would have been Brown, Smart, uh, Brogdon, Gallinari, five first pay. Like, it would have been insane. So he's not moving. I don't think they're moving. I could see Kyrie move though. Like Lakers finally decide that they're done with this rust thing and they throw in their picks and maybe try to get help from another team. I think there's a deal to be had there. And would Durant be too mad about being parted with Kyrie if there was good stuff coming back? I don't think he has a choice given the contract he's on. I'd love he could for sit Kyrie out, to go to LA. Gonna sit out? It'd be great if he went to the no. Lakers. Right? Durant's not gonna sit out. Durant's no. a gamer. He's the type of guy that like he may you know he he'll We'll plan to protest that type of situation, you know. Like I think, I don't know what's going through his mind today, but if if the rumor was, if the rumor is that he wants out, 
and he's made that known. Isn't it something? Yeah, that's fine, we never know still what anyone's play. We never know what anyone's thinking, right? Because we never get to talk to the players. We haven't heard from Durant since the last game. The right. Knicks just held a press conference with no questions. I heard from Durant, like so. We're all just we're all just sitting here. <laughs> yes, you did, Nick. <laughs> what did you say? You. I, I just said about, legacy, uh, and legacy legend and legend about Jordan, and uh, I don't know. I did mention him, but I've only mentioned him two times ever, and both times he snarks at me. I, I don't know why. I don't. I, I don't know, but whatever. Bobby, I, I saw that tweet that the Knicks put out. You can make they a had fadeaway that, jumper too. They had that press conference with and the, the with, highlight was beautiful J, with Jalen Brunson, and, and literally they had no. How disgraceful I didn't is that? Watch it, but had no reporters at it. Yeah, yeah. They just no had questions allowed. Cause... Like the team reporter asked questions. No, they just talked as a group, and I guess it's the thinking was they didn't want Mitchell discussion. They they <laughs> didn't want Mitchell discussion going on this at Brunson's league. presser. But have you ever heard anything like that? A presser with no reporters or questions. I mean, what a it's joke! Not, it's not it's not Adam Silver's NBA people. boys. You can't call it a press conference if yeah, the press that, isn't there. That'd be so, fine galore. Yeah, it's honestly, it's, it's honestly it's pathetic if that's if that's the w- direction that these teams are going to start to go in. And it is like that's that's really sad. And, and like it's just brainwashing is what it is. You know, I mean, like it's letting the team control the narrative, letting the fan. You know, pretty the much fans. it's a slap in the face. And again, the fans. you say, like, "Oh, I think the fans are that stupid that they're just going to yeah, believe everything that comes out of the I don't know. Twitter account." They're not. I, I hope not. Fans will defend it, though, because they like the players and the teams. And even I saw certain media people defending this, which was so ridiculous. It, this show, what we've just done, talking about the rant and what the Knicks are thinking, you got to at least talk to someone and ask them. And even if they don't want to answer it, maybe, have that opportunity maybe, to do it. Bobby, maybe like the old days. Guessing. Two people, two sources. Two. Yeah. There should be two. Not every, that. not Woj, every time he thinks of something, he tweets out source. No, it should be two sources. And this has gotten the out of control. The downside is that people are going to speculate. Yeah, that people are going to speculate without information, without answers, or without. Again, Durant, why does he want to trade? None of us know. He's, But he's beefing with me. He's beefing with me over Michael Jordan. I mean, are you kidding me? Dude, you owe yeah. your fans. You owe it. I know everybody here says he doesn't, but he does. He does. I owe my our fans here on this show. We all owe it to our fans to be decent and to be at least open, not torment these these guys. You guys don't know all the Nets tweeters that I got. I mean, it's really pathetic. I don't know what I see people in here for a second. It's Twitter, uh, but that's like that, Twitter, but, talking about the press. Yeah, yeah, but that's what you're talking about. A, a PR department now running everything through team Twitter accounts. Yeah. Is this what we want? What we're seeing. We're not getting. Right? And the commissioner wants story. new media, which isn't even new media, but the commissioner wants the players to present their own narrative. I don't know what the commissioner. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's on the team's dime or whatever this. So I don't really he know what his prerogative should be. is, but. To Durant's credit, he was one of the vocal advocates of opening the locker rooms up. So I'll give him that again. He said that was important. So he did say again, it. the access has to come back, and luckily, luckily it looks like it's going to there. One more thing, though, the Lakers do need <clears throat> Kyrie. I, I don't know how they can run it back with Westbrook. <laughs> that is they, the nightmare. That's the only other thing I saw either. this week. Uh, hey guys, oh, oh, Kyrie, man. LeBron, in, 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 in Lakers and in, in, in gold and purple. You don't want to see that. That'd be entertaining. They might recapture some magic. The nightmare with that trio. Nick. Kyrie um, going to Russ, LA is a dream come true. Russ. Kyrie going to play with LeBron, yeah, dream yeah. come true. That'd so, be fun to see that. Now, we'll see. I want to say one well. thing. I come off the as the angry guy time. today. I come off as the angry guy today okay. because I just think everybody has to be accountable. That's it. Okay. If I say something stupid, I get canceled. That's it. We all okay. have to. Be so there. don't. So, so don't do that. Um, <laughs> I think we're gonna probably wrap up the show in a minute. But this is a question that. Yeah, we're done. Um, all right, we're done. But I just wanna. I wanna throw this to Bobby and Josue if you wanna comment too. I don't have a yeah. whole lot to say about the summer league team, 
and I know Nick doesn't yeah, no either, but that. if you guys have any standout players or Nick, you can still stay on, bro. All right, then you're out. See you. Um, if, you know, Bobby, I'll throw it to you. I mean, the question's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. For those who so are listening, some... the question is, what do you guys think of the Summer League team? Stand out what? Summer League players? Some... What do you think of the Summer League team and the prospects on the team? Do you guys think the Celtics fill in the last few spots with players from free agency or from the Summer League team? And if so, who? Um, well, you look at the two players that they the, – the two. I just think this is a chance for one of these guys to, to maybe latch on to one of those final spots. I mean, this is that a night go. I would like to see the Celtics go and, and get someone for the veteran minimum. But I don't think it's going to be a, a, a main acquisition. You know what I mean? I don't think it'll be something that people are going to say like, "Oh, that's a huge pickup." But, but no, I think it's they, summer they, league. Well, no, I mean in terms of try, trying to address that, you know, the the, the oh, third, last um, few spots. My bad. Yeah, like I'd rather I'd rather see them do it in house and try to develop these things or not. You know, I I like I like, I like the notion of these these guys getting their reps in the G League because obviously see the top guy right now. I think that's an out be huge for him and his progression um and i like that to me the most um for what he does on defense but yeah i think those are the two guys to keep an eye on is going to contribute this season this upcoming season but it's something that the franchise should be looking forward to for sure bobby you were you were I'm uh, excited you were patrolling las vegas yes it was fun but it ended up being a really good team on the floor as well. I think we wondered, you know, with Neesmith getting traded and all of that, was there really a lot of meat on the bone to look at here in terms of these prospects? And there was Matt Ryan shooting 50% from three. I think he should be in the picture for one of those roster spots. And you had a game Matt, winner from him as Eddie. well, two really strong performances. He was part of the team last year. Uh, B, Kevin Gellin, that game against the Bucks really impressive was stuff. Unreal. That was such a fun game, and Kevin Gelly was going off in that one, too. I think he more than earned that position. I was excited about Travion Williams. He just didn't really do enough of the team, and even though Kevin Gelly's there about 24, I think there's still some upside there as a guy who was picked in the first round who can pick and pop, pick and roll, pass in the high post, rebound. He had 10 rebounds a game in the G League last year. I, I think he set the Celtics Summer League record for blocks per game. You know, Rob and others have played for the team, so... He was just he was just churning out there. Great energy, great leadership. I got a chance to interview him one on one too. Great guy, the nephew nice. of uh, Dikembe Mutombo, Ooh. by the way. So heard of him. He's, he's gonna be in. A, he's gonna be an exciting guy to watch. Yes, and he might be part of that backup center picture here. And both Brad and Eme said, "Look out for Luke Cornett. They believe in him in that role, and he's back go. on a new deal." Is it worse than Dwight, Whiteside, Cousins, some of these options that are out there? I think it's comparable. And Luke did play some good basketball for this team a year or two ago. So I don't hate it. If a better option comes up into the year, you still have those two TPs. It's risky, I think, to not have a backup plan given Al's age and uh, Rob's injury history here. But they believe in Grant to fill some minutes inside maybe. And Gallinari, I'm not as high on that one. I don't think he can play the five, but... They think he can, so they'll play more small ball with lineups like that this year to try to fill the gap. Because I don't think they're excited about the guys that are available. Joe Swain, are you? I think so. I really don't. Know. Yeah. Um, it sucks because I, I, I think, again, I think that's a big uh, role that they have open right now. But can Luke fill it? Maybe. Yikes! I just think that's something that they, they could address at the training camp. You know, we teams let other players go right before the season starts, and maybe they they. Pick up one of those guys, you know, one of the third string centers that latches mm-hmm. on before the preseason. But we'll, yeah, would you bring? Like, uh, there'll be a buyout would, team too. Would you bring Jawan over, Josue? Did he look ready to you? Um, I honestly, I was going to ask you guys. I that. just, I just don't think he, he's. I don't know. I don't see him as someone that can fit this rotation on um, Hauser, but he didn't look too great as well. But you. It's summer league. You don't know how back in training camp. Maybe there's a lot of pressure on, on him to with Brian in the mix and another shooter who sort of plays some of the things that he does on offense. So, um, but I still don't. I, I'm not like 
it's not like he's a lost, lost cause at this point. Shooting is something that the Celtics absolutely need off their bench, and they do. Then I think either one, one of those guys has a shot. So it pans out between those two. I just think defensively, yeah. like if you if, if you're unable to address something like that, if you're, if you're on uh, high high caliber defense, then of of making the team right now. If you're if you're if you're, if you're trying out for the Celtics. Yeah, I don't think yeah. there's any rush to bring him over. And I wrote about that yesterday. I did a full deep dive on his summer league, actually. So go check that out. He was really good. He was really exciting. Got a lot of potential. Yeah, he's he yeah, got a lot rides. of potential. Don't get me wrong. but yeah. He's only 19. So there's no rush. And no, no need to start a contract where he's just not going to play. I think it's better to have him play. And if the LNS foots the bill... I'll go over and watch him play in Paris, and we'll we'll see him in that environment. See if he's making any strides. <laughs> yeah, Bobby, that. no pressure. <laughs> hold on, uh, hold on. I think uh, Nick is still here. Let me let, let's see if Nick will uh, agree. Nick, can you Nick, tolerate you uh, a fat then? old boomer rage in France with you? Because maybe we'll go then. If I can come <laughs> yeah, with you, I don't need to cover go. games. <laughs> yeah, the only <laughs> way. Yeah, that's Bobby. A, that, that's the big catch: is that you can go to France, but you have to take Nick with you. Or All Nick right. has to take Bobby with him. And Bob's like the guy who's dating. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's the way to word it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Bobby, you're gonna stay <laughs> home. You're not gonna go. Uh, we'll do it. We'll no, do that it. was I'm great. And, and you guys have to film, film like the threat. Like Me the angry. You gotta try to interview be him in French. Must see TV. Oh, that's true. I do it. We're we're we'll figure it out. Ooh, no free ads. Yeah. We'll have to bleep that out. Um, I think I need to open the Regina's now. Appreciate yeah. you guys. I'm in. You know, sort of hey, popping up. Hey, good to see you guys here. again. But that's what happens when you subscribe. You get your first time checking this out. Uh, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. We'll be back on next week at some point. Maybe uh, we'll get, get different faces here. We don't know. It'll be a surprise. There you go. So you get that to look forward to. That's right. To it's this, it's this the summer. Uh, Nick. You never know who's going to show up. Bobby, what hat would you wear in France? Dude, the little... Oh, it's in there. Tassel, a little little Tammy. A Tammy. Yeah, you got to rock it. A Tammy. It's got like the tassel on the side, a Tammy. I think we got something going here. Yeah, let's let's look. Bobby, I'm in. Price it out. People are asking about (laughs) Xanis. Oh, John will be back. And I brought the negativity, the fire. You're all good. John yeah. does it though, where he's likable. I come off as so angry. <laughs> well, because you you are angry at the time. Wait I'm kind of angry. We'll, we'll reel Wait that in. We'll, gets... we'll get Summer Nick back. Um, we got to get the we'll boys together it. for. We have to get the crew together for a for a, a a dinner too, a summer dinner. But trying to get Nick to foot the bill. No, no. When John and... gets back, it, the plan was to wait for John to come back, and then it'll be a. Dinner, we will bring all of us. The Garden Report will bring Cedric Maxwell, we'll bring Bob Ryan, maybe get the ball. We'll take a picture together. We'll take a picture, we'll post it together, we'll post it. Get Goodman. (laughs) I know the chatters love Jeff Goodman. We might bring him there. Felger might show up with John. You know, they're close. Maybe we'll, uh, (laughs) maybe we'll announce. Maybe we'll announce where the dinner is, so and, and we'll 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 charge a five dollar cover, and, and we'll maybe people want to come. And, All right, and make a couple right I can do that. I don't think anyone's gonna pay five bucks. They probably but maybe would. we'll announce one, where one we thing. are, and they'll just come hang out. They won't them. give a five dollar tip one in here, thing. but they might pay a cover charge, Jimmy. If you're True. playing guitar, they might they might pay five dollars just to say something mean to me. I mean, it's kind of and me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jimmy, and Bobby, poor Bobby. One, one more thing. Nick, I, I know you want to drop this. We gotta send some love to Evan Lazar, who is uh, uh, yeah. uh, moving on. Yes, what up, Lazar? Yeah, if I could say just two things, I mean, well, maybe three. But one thing I'm I'm very <laughs> proud of with this company is we've been able to help facilitate careers. And Jared is one. Jared Weiss is a big one. He helped us build our Celtics content along with Jimmy, and then later on with Joe Sway. Lazar moved here really for to help build a – we didn't have any Patriots. Yeah, we had zero Patriots coverage really to start. Yeah, we, we had Trags who was great, powerhouse. but there was not like the Academy robust. Academy zero. Yeah. And uh, Evan didn't just bring – he came in and onto the beat and it was like, boom, a meteorite. I, I think like everybody kind of – he's just so talented. I know where he's going. It's his place to – 
to kind of tell you guys, and if you're fans of and you follow Patriots CLNS, stay tuned because uh, Evan is just phenomenal, and he'll still be on on uh, the Patriots channel often, you know, making appearances and whatnot. Phenomenal. Yeah, look at Bobby Manning. Bobby Manning's the only one in the history of a pandemic to go from college to immediately full time employed. Bobby, <laughs> I don't know how you did it. Yeah, most people go the opposite. Way. I'll tell you how he did it. <laughs> he came in and said, I can edit after you teach me. And you did after we taught you. And we, we yeah. got it together, bro. So and just way, Jimmy, you know, the love is Hey, listen, if, if you want it enough, you'll you'll get it. You manifest that shit. And, that and Evan is Lazar true. Evan Lazar wanted it, and that dude is a machine. When he pumps out, you know, film coverage, footage, he can break down highlight, he can break down film like like the best of them out there impressive. and he has a great following and i'm sure wherever he goes um those people will follow him there and i'm sure that whoever um clns gets to fill his shoes will be you know just as just as hungry to to you know be the next evan or maybe a veteran jimmy maybe maybe yeah i have i have i'm i'm told nothing so i have no idea but whoever it is i'm excited for that i'm excited for evan so congrats (laughs) to evan and um thanks everybody for watching and i think Go we sucks. are out of here joe sway take it away uh <laughs> that's a way to end the uh, perfect way to end perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect. for evan's announce uh, a big one i don't want to again we don't want to spoil it but uh and shout out uh Shout out Athletic Greens one last time. You want to go to Athletic Shout out Xanis, who you know is in the chat room, just not dot chat. com slash, <laughs> slash garden. garden. Absolutely. Burn. Guys, sign up if you haven't already. We'll see you guys That's next week. Stuff. All right, peace.